Hello, my name is Tony Nielsen, and uh, I'm adjudicating the Friedman versus Thomas debate. Um, first, I would like to note that I very much enjoyed the debate, although I should say I did not at all expect the pace of the debate. Uh, I'm not sure that that is something that necessarily upsets me. Um, I'm sort of undecided. I just really didn't anticipate the web debates moving at such a quick pace. So. I don't know what to make of that. Um, anyways, uh, after uh, watching the debate, I think that first, I think there are some arguments that the negative is ahead on. The first is that the lack of affirmative solvency evidence on the translation of marriage into benefits. The movement for marriage uh, is to some degree, uh, as per the affirmative argument, a leap of faith that could be followed with conservative manipulations of the tax code, for example, to take away all marriage benefits later. And maybe that's not aimed at uh, queer populations when it happens, but, you know, it becomes sort of a later manipulation. And this isn't an argument in the debate. But I'm, I'm just saying that it's a leap of faith to say that marriage is going to translate into a bunch of benefits uh, that aren't even particularly well discussed by the affirmative case. Um, and there's certainly not really any evidence that indicates that they will somehow be the mystical gateway. Um, there's just like uh, a piece of evidence, a very good piece of evidence, um, or I should say a very rhetorically powerful piece of evidence that does say that this, you know, this changes the hearts and minds of the people, so to speak. Um, and I think that there's some value to that, but what does it change it to and how does it materialize? And anybody who's focused on pragmatism has to be focused on the materialization of their argument. Uh, the second argument I think the negative is head on is that the normalization of um, queer relationships into marriage produces a sort of a begging effect that one has to get out their beggar's sack for entry into the regime of heterosexuality. And uh, the negative's argument is that marriage makes the gays respectable. You know, right now there's this radical queer force that you know, theoretically people don't get, I don't know, maybe they're not so radical. I think this would be something for the affirmative to say that these people aren't as radical as you think they are. Um, anyways, uh, that seems to coincide with lots of the affirmative's arguments. There's not really an answer directly to this except in the non-unique and pragmatism arguments which are coming attractions in the RFD. I'll get to those. Um, Though sometimes I am sort of asking, you know, what is the big impact to heterosexism? Is it the violence that queers face now, uh, that they're dealing with right now? Um, you know, I get your your Wendy Brown slick PR campaign argument, but I'm sort of left wondering, is marriage at least one small grain of sand on a beach of injustice better? Um, you know, and it does only take one grain of sand to make a pearl, so to speak. Uh, this is a question I'm sort of left with. I don't think that either team really resolves it um, as much as they're sort of trying. I don't know if it is resolvable, really. Um, I do think that the negative is doing a much better job of debating this. The third argument is hollow hope. The uh, affirmative team is certainly lacking for a response here. Um, Jordan, you should make use of that history that you think that Chris is lacking and talk about wins and sexism and racism, religion and disability and the snowball effect that they have and the way that small changes do add up um, and don't create a sense of completion. Like, why is that fundamentally true? I think you sort of start some inroads to say that there are not a bunch of people who think that racism is over. You know, I mean, the bell hooks of the world have not suddenly been like, oh yeah, I was convinced it's over. Anyways, um, but you know, his um, his example is probably just more concrete than yours in terms of, you know, the way the election is going down right now in Herman Cain, um, and certainly he's just has a, uh, a more specific example, much more tangible concept than you do happening here. Uh, now, there's some things I think the affirmative is head on. The first is, uh, get real, girlfriend, get real. All right, pragmatism, pragmatism. What are we going to do with our anti-assimilation self-love once it's accomplished, but the world isn't on board, right? Like, I already love the shit out of myself, right? Like, yay, RuPaul loves the shit out of RuPaul. Now what? Like, 
How is that going to change the violence that other people feel towards me or towards RuPaul um, when that violence erupts? Um, anyways, all I'm asking is, how does this translate into a win for queer peoples that is tangible? All right, not something that is metaphysical, but something that is physical. How does the metaphysical translate into the physical, uh, into the material? If I could take my love and use it as a means to access my wife's health care, well, I would do that. But the last time I checked, Kaiser does not take love as a measure of insurance beneficiary eligibility. So I think this is a fair question, right? How, how does this translate? Second, the marriage movement continues. Yes, it is an argument that is complicit with the negatives criticism of homonationalism. Um, side note, all major movements seem to have these tensions, even if they're not like dualistic tensions, like the only two tensions that exist, the assimilationist and non-assimilationist elements. But they do all seem to have them, all major movements. Um, and those movements continue, which means that, you know, the idea that they shut down, I mean, I don't think any of us believe the Rosenberg argument wholeheartedly. Anyways, bottom line. Uh... The negative is definitely winning that the affirmative is a leap of faith without any real evidence that proves that marriage translates into benefits. And in a debate sense, the negative won a solvency argument, a case argument, that the AF didn't read any solvency ev. And the risk of a dissad that marriage might lock people into the position of the abject other begging people for help is probably violent and replicates a violent relationship. Um, it sounds like in this world the movement is already co-opted by conservative forces who want to turn the gays into respectable Democrats and Republicans and prevent any actual thinking about relationships um, or the violence that happens because of relationships. And so in this sense, marriage is bad and it should not be top priority. The last thing I want to note, because I'm going to post this on YouTube and it matters to me. Personally, I don't believe any of what the negative is saying is, uh, well, not any. Uh, I don't believe most of what the negative is saying in terms of its terminal conclusion. A lot of what the negative is saying about assimilation is true and its dangers, um, and marriage is a choice. In the next world, frankly, I am an assimilated lesbian who wants her federally recognized marriage benefit, tax return, and 1,000 plus mythical marriage benefits. But I'm also a debate coach who thinks the AF has to read some solvency evidence, so I vote negative. Uh, thank you. I really did enjoy it. Um, it was a pleasant but critically engaging surprise.